we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lusaka Avocado Multipurpose Cooperative Training. Today, we have Mr. Chivesa, who's going to talk to us about tax, finance, and farming as a profitable business. If you have Gmail, you will be able to ask us questions in the, in the chat using the YouTube link. If, however, you're unable to get to, if, however, you're unable to get um, Gmail and to ask us questions in the chat, please feel free to send messages via WhatsApp on the, on the groups. So we have the two groups for the Lusaka Avocado. I'll be keeping an eye out for them and then I'll be able to take in all your questions. And without much further ado, I would like to hand over to Mr. Chivesa. And Mr. Chivesa, I will now share the screen for your presentation, sir. Thank you. Kindly let me know once you can see the screen, sir. Okay, I'm able to see it. Okay, it's over to you, sir. I'll mute. Thank you. Good evening, fellow farmers, and uh, welcome to today's presentation. Thank you, Madam Kalinda, for all the works. Uh, we are sorry for that flu. May you get well soon. Uh, today, we are you, going to, today we are going to discuss the subject of tax and finance. Last week we looked at uh, the profitability part, but uh, it's a continuation. We can move to the next screen. So our learning objectives is to understand that every business, including farming, consists of two parts, the primary part and the support part or the secondary part. The second objective is to understand the difference between profit and cash flow. The last one is to understand the tax obligations of every business or enterprise. Next screen. The introduction. The goal of every business is to make a profit and maintain a positive cash flow for it to continue operating in a foreseeable future. In the absence of a positive cash flow and profitability, the enterprise may wind up or stop operations. The business must also be a good corporate citizen by meeting all its statutory obligations, e.g. paying taxes to the government. Next screen. The two parts of an enterprise. Every business and every farming enterprise consists of two parts, the primary part and the support part. The primary part of every business or farming enterprise may differ from that of the other businesses and farming enterprises. However, the support part of all the businesses is the same. Next screen. The primary farming activities. Primary farming activities answer the question, why are you farming? They are the purpose and the reason your farm exists. That is, for example, our goal is to produce quality avocado fruits. So that's uh, a primary activity. 
uh, primary farming activities are related to the various brands of your farming business. E.g., you could be in fruit tree growing, poultry, vegetables, maize, or beekeeping, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So those are the examples of primary activities, which is uh, the first part of every enterprise. The next screen. The support. The second part, which is support uh, part or functions or secondary. We have uh, finance. So when we talk about finance, this is the money of the business. So we finance profit and cash flow are important here. So whenever we talk of finance, we are looking at the issues of profit. We are looking at the issues of cash flow. The, the second on support is personnel. They are the people in your business. They do the work. These are our workers. So relationships are important here. So we need to develop a very good relationship with our workers if uh, the business has to continue. Because normally uh, we start as uh, sole traders, family businesses, but as activities increase, we start employing workers to help us do the work, to help us do other uh, activities which are required for our enterprise to, uh, to grow, to earn an income and meet other obligations. So it's very important to have a very good relationship with workers. Next screen. Uh, under support uh, part, we have uh, logistics. These are the things of the business, that is tools, equipment, uh, irrigation systems, motor vehicles, et cetera, et cetera. So it's important the, the things of the business uh, in service condition or are, are useful so that at the end of the day, we are able to meet our vision and mission and other goals and objectives we've set for ourselves. Then under support, we have information. These are the papers, computers, equipment, and files of the business. So accuracy of this information is very, very important because in the absence of us having access to information at the right time and correct information, it will be very difficult to make sound decisions for the benefit of our enterprise, as well as other stakeholders. The next screen. The fifth one under support is liaison. The people around your business, you talk to them often. Talking to the right people is important here. So here we are talking about stakeholders. For example, we belong to Rusaka Avocado Mount Peoples Cooperative is falling under uh, that heading liaison. We have the banks, we have statutory bodies, we have friends, fellow farmers, neighbors. So these are the people we talk to. The sixth one, which is the last, is marketing. This is the selling of your products. So at the end of the day, when our trees start producing the nice avocados, we need to sell them. So demand and value are important here. So whatever we are growing, whatever we are producing at our farms, at the end of the day, there must be demand for that. In the absence of that, then we we'll end up in losses. There will be no one to buy. So someone must want your product and be willing to pay for it. Uh, years back, uh, here in, in Mpongwe, there was a 
an organization which enticed farmers to grow chili. So people did their fields, planted, applied all the knowledge uh, they linked. At the time of harvesting and selling, this organization disappeared. So these farmers who joined uh, that venture ended up with losses because they didn't sell. So it's very important to ensure that what we are producing at our farms, what we are growing, there is a market and people are willing to buy our products. Next slide. So the above six support functions are not the main reason you farm. They may add support your farming enterprise. Therefore, we need to limit the size of support functions to the essential but effective minimum. There shouldn't be too little or too many. So these support functions, we need to balance. In an event that, uh, uh, for example, you have one hectare of uh, avocados, they've ripened, and you only have one employee. It will be very difficult to, to harvest all the avocados, do the packaging, and do the transportation, and all those uh, activities involved. So we need to balance all the six functions under, under support so that they are not too little, again, they are not too many. Because for example, if you have excess labor and uh, you are failing to pay them, at the end of the day, there will be an industrial or labor dispute. So it's important to balance so that at the end of the day, you are able to, to make a profit. So when it comes to, uh, for example, I've seen situations where uh, uh, people got loans from the bank or other financial institutions to invest in farming. You find that uh, that particular farm has a very big house at the farm, but uh, at the end of the day, that house will be a liability. It will not be an asset. It will not bring in money. So it's very important all the areas, whatever uh, equipment, tools, labor, there must be a balance. Next slide. So now we are going to look at uh, finance in uh, uh, some detail. What we should know when we talk about finance, there is a golden rule which says over time, you should make more money than you spend. That is, you must be able to make a profit. Of course, uh, the period will vary depending on uh, the activities which you are doing. There are those activities which are short term, like horticulture, the growing of vegetables. There are ones which are medium term, like keeping of goats. Then there are those which are long term, like uh, avo farming, where you, uh, you 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 plant trees. It will take a number of years, uh, two to three years, for you to to start selling. So it's important that uh, over time you are able to to be in a profit situations. Then uh, the other important thing to note is that money and things gained by dishonest will not bring prosperity. That is Proverbs uh, 10 verse 2, which says, you got 10 treasures are of no value. So uh, as we do our business, we should make sure that we our scales are fair. We do, for lack of a better term, clean business so that at the end of the day, we'll have nothing to fear because we have earned our profits, we have earned our income doing correct business. Then uh, we also need to, 
draw a budget. It will help you to plan and manage your income and expenses. Because once you do a budget, then as you do the spending, you do what at the end of the day or at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter, you do what is called the variance analysis to see did things go according to budget. Now budget, the other term or a short term is it's a financial plan, which will look at what you intend to achieve at the end of the day. It's very important to do the budget. As we get to the component of tax, we'll, we'll appreciate why budgeting is important because even if the taxman is also interested in this part. Next slide. In addition to drawing up a budget, we need to draw up a cash flow statement, uh, which will show how much income you will receive from what, and how much you are going to spend on what. So it's important to have uh, the cash flow in place as well. And our cash flow goal should be to have the money you are going to need during the month, from the first day of the month. For example, uh, if this month of October, according to our projections, we need uh, 20,000 kwacha to meet all our uh, current expenses, meaning to pay the employees, to buy the chemicals, to buy the fuel, to pay the score, to pay our taxes. We need to ensure that, that as the month begins, that money is ready to available so that Whatever expenditure is due, we are able to pay on time. Next slide. What you should do under finance, that is pay your personnel, debt and accounts on time. Now, if the month, the month comes to an end, our employees have not received their salaries, their morale will be very low. They will not put in their level best. They will just be complaining. The other part is we need to pay our debts on time. For example, if uh, you have a loan, it means when it's due, it must be paid on time or else you are going to incur more costs in terms of interest. Then we should also pay our accounts on time. There are situations where we get things on credit, so we need to pay our suppliers so, they, so that they continue to do business with us. Then there are certain situations where uh, our suppliers, under the terms and conditions, they will say, if we delay in paying them, they will charge us interest for late payment. So that's a cost which we need to avoid at all costs. Then we need to keep our accounts. That is, we need to enter all our expenses and income under appropriate headings. File all the receipts and invoices. This one is very, very critical. We need to keep all the receipts, all the invoices, because the taxman will be interested in seeing those receipts. Then uh, we need to ask a reliable person with knowledge and experience to help us with financial planning and management. So it's very important. The members say, Kabusha Takorelobo, meaning if you ask and uh, you will never go wrong. So it's very important to always consult especially in the area of finance and management. Then we should also ensure that we register with relevant statutory bodies. Uh, we register our business, our enterprise. We need to register with PACRA and their motto it says business starts here. So we need to start with PACRA, then ZRI. Now this time around, when you just register with PACRA, you are also automatically registered with ZRA for tipping purposes. The two systems are now linked. Then also need to register with NAPSA 
also need to register with workers' compensation fund control board and any other statutory body where we need to do the registration. The next slide. Under finance, there are also challenges. There are problems to expect and to prevent. Number one, poor record keeping. Don't allow receipts and invoices to get lost or forget, forget to enter income and expenditure. Uh, on this one, um, I'll be quick to mention that uh, when uh, we want to get a loan from the bank, the bank will ask us to submit financial statements. So when we go to see the uh, accountants to help us prepare the, the accounts, they will ask for, for this information. So it's very important that uh, we keep them. And as I mentioned, uh, ZRI also is also a, a stakeholder in our businesses. They will always ask for receipts and invoices. And we need to keep them as long as the business is in existence. We shouldn't throw them away. The other challenge which is under finance is private expenses on the business account, meaning we need to pay ourselves a salary from the business and see to it that we make ends meet from that payment. Because normally we have the tendency of uh, getting into the cash, cash box and get money, which is used on private expenses. Now, if we do that and uh, ZRA happens to come and check in our books, they will be able to find that we use the money on ourselves and instead of the business. So they, they are going to charge tax on that plus penalties and interest. But if we pay ourselves a salary, we, we deduct the taxes which are due under payers UN and pay ZRI, then that way we will be safe. Then the other problem uh, which we normally face as entrepreneurs is wrong priorities, where people spend too much on things that need money instead of things that make money. We must spend more on primary functions than support functions. For example, as a, as a farmer, uh, we need to decide between buying a Mercedes Benz or buying a counter. So that at the end of the day, that uh, property or asset must be able to help us generate income. For example, if we buy a counter, we'll be able to transport our inputs to the farm and we'll be able to transport our produce to the market. Now, if we buy a Mercedes Benz because the neighbors have won, then at the end of the day, when our avos are ready, we'll be forced to hire transport and it's very expensive uh, to hire transport. Next slide. The other challenge under finance is debt. Production loans are acceptable, but don't get into debt to maintain a, a certain standard of living. There is a quote there on debt which says, don't buy things you don't need with money you don't have to impress people you don't like and you know. So it's important that uh, any debt which we are going to incur, any loan which we are going to, to borrow, we use it for production so that at the end of the day, we'll be able to pay back that loan 
with interest. But if we spend the whole amount which we have borrowed on support functions, it will be very difficult to pay back the loan. And usually this leads to the owners of the money, like the banks, they'll grab our farms because we might have used the farm as security. So they'll grab the farm and sell it to recover their money. So it's very important that any debt we get must go into production and we pay it back as quickly as possible because it has a cost and the cost is the interest. Next slide. Here we're going to look at the difference between cash flow and profit. Cash is to your business as fuel is to your car. If you run out, you stop. So meaning at any particular time, there must be cash available to meet expenses as they for you, even unforeseen challenges in case uh, the pump breaks down and it's at the peak of irrigation, we need to quickly have that pump repaired because cash is available. But in the absence of having ready cash and when the pump breaks down, it means we'll stop irrigating our fields, which will affect production. Eventually, even our profitability will be affected. So your primary business goal should be to keep your cash flow healthy. You can have plenty of profit and still run short on cash. Why? Because in basic terms, profit is revenues and expenses projected, planned for or promised. While cash flow is revenues and expenses realized. So when we look at uh, profit, for example, there will be times when we we'll sell our products on credit. We will not get the money right there and then. So it's uh, income, which is promised. Meanwhile, cash is something which is realized, which is realized and which is readily available for use as and when it is needed. Next slide. So profits measure the value that flows through your business operation. And the value moving through your business in a month can be very different from the cash that moves through it in that same month. Now, what makes the difference between profit and cash? I'll give an example. If we pay our salaries, for example, we've paid out 10,000 as uh, our wage bill for that particular month. It means because salaries is current expenditure or current expense, the profit will go down by 10,000 quarts. Even our cash will go down by 10,000 quarts. Now, if we, we happen to have gotten a loan and we need to pay back uh, the, the principal amount plus interest in that particular month. Now, the, if for example, the principal is 10,000, it means our cash will go down by 10,000. Our profit will remain the same. The profit will not change. Why? Because the 10,000 we are paying back for the loan we got is a capital component. So it does not affect the profit position. But in a situation where we get a loan of 10,000, the profit will remain the same. Our cash position will increase. So this is where uh, normally <clears throat> we have challenges where somebody would say, but 
you are telling me that I've made a profit. But when I check in my bank account, there is no money. The reason is because of the variables. When it comes to cash flow statements, you are dealing with capital as well as current expenditure. But on the profit side, you are only dealing with the <clears throat> current expenditure. Next slide. We move on now to tax. Uh, tax is a compulsory contribution to state revenue levied by government on workers, income, and business profit. There are two quotations there on tax. Tax is the price you pay for making money. Then the other one is two things are certain in life, death and taxes. That's right. We shall look at uh, the registration process for the first one there is uh, taxpayer identification number, which is tipping. We also look at uh, income tax, payers UN, turnover tax, and uh, value added tax. So currently with uh, uh, technology coming this side of the world, we can now do our registration of any tax type online. But in an event, one has challenges to do the registration. They can drive or walk over to the nearest ZRI office, get the physical forms, fill them and submit. Then uh, you'll be registered for any tax type. Next slide. I've jumped once, right? So we'll look at uh, taxpayer identification number. That's the tipping. That's a starting point. So this taxpayer identification number can be equated to the national registration card number which we get as individuals when we reach the age of 16 we, we are registered to confirm that we are zambians so this taxpayer identification number is also a unique number for tax purposes so if you have registered your business as a limited company with pakra and you want to register with zra for tipping the requirements are that you need to submit a copy of the certificate of incorporation, the copy of certificate of share capital, then a copy of statement of particulars approved by the registrar, which is form two, the articles of association, sketch map of the physical address for the business. So those are the required documents for you to register for taxpayer identification number. Next slide. For partnerships, this is a situation where uh, two or more people have come together to do business and they are registered with PACRA under business name they will need to submit the certificate of registration and statement of particulars approved by the registrar, which is form two, sketch map or physical address for the partnership. Then uh, the partners need to have individual tippings and income tax numbers. Because what will happen is at the end of the day, when they've done the, the business operations, they make profit, they are going to share the profits. So 
each partner will be required to, to pay tax to, to ZRIA. So in addition to the partnership being registered, the partners also need to register with, uh, with ZRIA. Next slide. So proprietors registered under the Business Names Act. So for them to register uh, for tipping, they are required to submit a copy of the NRC or passport, statement of particulars approved by the, the registrar, that is form three, certificate of business registration, sketch map of physical address. The sketch map, if, if you've observed at every point, there, there's a requirement of a sketch map because uh, ZRA inspectors at one particular time, they will need to visit uh, either your farm or your shop to see how you are doing, they check your books. So it's very important that we attach a sketch map for our physical address. Next slide. Individuals, that is those who have not registered with PACRA, but they want to register for tipping, they need to submit a copy of the NRC sketch map of the physical address. Next slide. Firms registered under Cooperative Societies Act, for them to register for tipping, they'll be required to submit a copy of the certificate of registration, an instrument relating to the cooperative sketch map of the physical address. Next slide. So now we go to income tax registration, which is the tax type. So taxpayers or businesses whose turnover is below 800,000 kwacha in a charge year will register for turnover tax. So and usually it's for businesses when you are just starting. The, usually the, the starting point is that you register for turnover tax, though there are exceptions. For businesses in uh, mining, consultants are not uh, required to register under turnover tax. Then they will register straight under income tax. And taxpayers whose turnover is above 800,000 will register for income tax. And this is applicable to both individuals and limited companies. So when you start under turnover tax, you will be monitoring your, uh, your, your sales, your turnover. So that when you find out that you have, your sales have gone above 800,000, then in the following year, you are supposed to register under income tax. Next slide. Yeah, so under income tax, uh, partnerships, mining operating entities and consultants businesses do not go under Turnover tax, regardless of their turnover being below 800,000. So, for partnerships, straight away the partners will register under income tax. We can move to the next slide. Pay registration. This will apply to individuals, companies, partnerships, cooperatives, etc who have employees or any entity that intends to employ. This is regardless of whatever emoluments 
employees receive. So pay as you earn uh, in full, which is pay in short, is uh, is also an income tax. That is a system of taxing those individuals who are in employment. So when we start our operations, if we we don't have employees, but we we'll still register and, uh, uh, under pay, we'll be submitting new returns. But the moment we have employees, then we need to start including them in that return. Even if their monthly salary is less than the, the, the minimum threshold, the tax exemption, but so we need to uh, make sure that we include them in the pay return on a monthly basis. So even if you are a sole trader, you have employees, you need to, to include them in the pay return. If you are a limited company, you have employees, you need to include them in uh, that return, partnership, cooperatives, it is even uh, NGOs, if you're a non-government organization, but you have employees, you are required to register for pay as you end so that you can deduct from their salaries. Next slide. VAT registration. Businesses are required by law to apply for VAT registration if they deal in taxable goods and services. The taxable turnover must exceed the registration threshold of 800,000 quarter per annum, which is per year, unless the taxpayer wishes to register under voluntary registration. So the following are the requirements for VAT registration. Number one, for existing businesses. So you need to submit the latest financial statements and projected cash flow for one year. Earlier on, we, we, we talked about when we were looking at finance, we looked at uh, cash flow. So even uh, in this situation, when we want to register for, for VAT, ZRA will ask for cash flow statement. So now, when it comes to VAT for existing businesses, when we start, we are our turnover will, uh, normally will be less than eight hundred thousand. But as we are uh, operating within the year, if our income or our sales goes above eight hundred thousand, we need to go to ZRA and apply to register for VAT. This is a situation where we are now, uh, it's now compulsory because our turnover is above 800,000. But there are situations where uh, even if your turnover is less than 800,000, you can still apply for VAT registration under voluntary. There are situations where probably we are dealing with big companies or even government ministries. They will, uh, they will require that uh, we give them a tax invoice, meaning we give them an invoice where we have charged VAT. Then in this situation, we can approach ZRA tell them that though our turnover is less than 800,000 in a year, but we want to register under voluntary because our customers want a tax invoice. Then the other thing which we need to attach for an existing business is a sketch map of the physical address. Uh, you might be saying, uh, but under, Shipping, we submitted the, uh, the sketch map again under VAT. Now, VAT is another division. So, 
So they want to have uh, their records. They need to submit a copy of certificate of incorporation or registration of the business under the Business Act. Then the latest bank statements covering a period of three months. Next slide. For a new business which wants to register for VAT, they are also required to submit a sketch map of the physical address, proof of ownership of the business premises, latest bank statements covering a period of three months, business plan and projected cash flow for one year, certificate of incorporation or registration or under the Business Act. Next slide. Uh, under voluntary registration, as Ella mentioned, businesses may also register for VAT on voluntary if your turnover is below 800,000. These businesses will be required to renew the registration every 12 months by notifying the Commissioner General in writing 30 days before expiry of the 12, 12 month period of their intention to renew the registration. So under compulsory, when you are registered for VAT, there is no need to reapply for renewal. But for voluntary, because you are, your turnover is below 800,000, you are required to apply for renewal to continue. If you don't, then the, that voluntary VAT registration will be suspended. Next slide. Post registration requirements. So after you have registered uh, your business with ZRA, there are things which are supposed to be done so that you comply with the tax law. So there's return filing and payments of tax. So under income tax, we have two categories. There is turnover tax and income tax. So if the turnover, <clears throat> if the turnover per annum is more than 800,000, the taxpayer will fall under the mainstream income tax. So under income tax, you'll be required to submit a provisional return on or before the first March of every year. Then you also be required to submit a final income tax return on or before 21st June of every year. Now, the provisional return is based on the, the budget. When you do your projections and the, from that budget, if you have projected a profit, then you calculate the tax which you are supposed to pay in four equal installments in that particular year. Then at the end of the year, you'll be required to submit the final return. Next slide. Under in income tax, we have turnover tax. So this is where your income is less than 800,000 per year. So you submit a turnover tax returns monthly by the 14th day of the following month. So meaning uh, last month was uh, September. So those who are under turnover tax by the 14th of October, they need to submit their returns. But if there is no business in any month, if not made any sales, you are still required to submit a new return without fail by the 14th. Next slide. Uh, 
under pay as well. A monthly pay return should be submitted by the 10th day of the following month after the end of each tax period. So for the month of September, all businesses uh, registered for pay as UN, they are supposed to submit a return for pay as UN by the 10th of October. Then there's also a new requirement that uh, all employees must register for tipping so that uh, the accountant or the owner of the business when submitting the pay return must indicate the tipping of that particular employee, the name, then the other details. So it must be ensure that all the employees register for tipping and they submit to the employer so that when you do the monthly pay as you return, you include that number for that particular employee. This is a new requirement. It's uh, the same with the NAPSA. When you register employees for NAPSA, they are given that social security number. So even in ZRA has introduced this new requirement that all employees must now be registered for tipping. Next slide. Also registration requirements for VAT. A person or company is expected to submit a VAT return on or before the 18th. So businesses which are currently registered for VAT, for the month of September, they will be required to submit the VAT return for September before or on the 18th of October. If you submit on the 19th, that is called late submission and ZRA will charge a penalty for late submission of the return. If there is no business in that particular month or period, a new return should be submitted without fail by the due date. There are situations where you've not made any sales in that particular month. But if there are expenses, you can still include the expenses in that return, though there are no sales. And in this situation, we are going to end up in a refund position, meaning you are going to end up in a negative. So ZRA has to refund you the VAT component, which has resulted because of no sales in that particular month or period. Next slide. Rights and obligations of a taxpayer. What are the rights of the taxpayer? One, you have the right to accurate and timely tax information. So if the current uh, uh, developments in, in technology, uh, there is now a requirement that uh, when we register for these taxes uh, and our uh, details, we also include the phone numbers, we also include the emails, so that uh, any developments, any changes, like uh, this time around, ZRI is sending um, information pertaining to the just presented budget and the tax changes. Currently, uh, ZRI is also introduced a uh, tax amnesty. So they are sending out information. So that's one of our rights. If we register with ZRA, ZRA must give us timely information, which is accurate, so that we also make decisions on time. Then we have the right to objections against tax assessments. There are situations where ZRA will carry out audits. Now, they are set, 
they are what they call tax audits, desk audits, just there in their offices at ZRA, they'll go through our records and make adjustments. Or they will write to us that they want to check our books. So when they go through them, they also come up with the, their tax figures, their code tax assessments. If we are not happy with those figures, we have the right to object, to write to them that you don't agree with their tax and we give the reasons. Then also have the right to appeal. In a situation where we are objecting, we are not agreeing to the to their tax audit, to, to their tax assessment. If we are aggrieved and they stand by their grounds, then we have the right to appeal. We can appeal to after ZRA. Of course, within ZRA, there is an appeals office. But again, if they stand by the assessment, we can appeal to the revenue appeals tribunal. If we are not happy with the decision of the tribunal, we can appeal to the high court. We can even go as far as the Supreme Court. So that's one of our rights. Then we have the right to good service from ZRA. We also have the right to confidential treatment. We also have the right to fair treatment. Next slide. What are the obligations of a taxpayer? So to rights, the other side of the coin is obligation. So we also have obligations on our part. The first one is to register with ZRA on time. So when we start our businesses, we must ensure that we register on time. Irrespective of the size of the business. Because if you don't, you get carried away with running the business, you are making money, there will come a time when you want to do something which will require you getting a tax clearance from ZRA. So it's very important. You start small, register, and move on. Then we need to file returns within the prescribed time periods. So if that tax type, for example, pay as you had by the tenants, we need to submit, we must make sure that it is done on time. If we do it after the tenants, then ZRA will charge us penalties and interest. Now, penalties and interest is not the business of ZRA, but it's just a way of ensuring that uh, we, we abide, we are tax compliant. Then we should also make sure that we make timely payments of taxes due. Now, in the event, for example, pay as you end. If there is tax to be paid by the tenant, we submit the return and make payment. Now, in the event, we our cash flow, we have challenges with our cash flow, we need to inform ZRA, we need to write ZRA that we have a challenge in paying. And uh, there is also room to enter in what is called a time to pay agreement. Now, if we have failed to pay and we don't approach ZRA, after 30 days, that date will move to another unit called the debt recovery unit. Now, these guys, they are not friendly at times. They will come with uh, demand notices, garnishes. They even issue warrant of distress. They come and get your equipment, your katundu, just to recover your taxes. So it's very important. If we can't pay on time, or if the tax is big and our cash flow cannot meet that obligation, we approach ZRA, sign a time to pay agreement. We have, they will give us three months, six months, depending uh, on the amounts involved. Then the other obligation is to declare 
correct taxes at all times. Now, with the coming in of technology, ZRA is able to check, is able to compare what we have declared with other uh, sources. And usually this is called uh, uh, in, uh, intelligence. For example, years back, uh, ZRA at one time asked the mines on the copper belt to submit a list of all suppliers and contractors and what they paid them in a particular period. Then now ZRA went to check in the files of those suppliers and contractors to see what they declared. And many of them were found to be wanting. They under declared their taxes. So ZRA came up with it, tax assessments, which was uh, uh, demanded on these uh, contractors and suppliers to pay. So we must make sure that at all times, our declarations are correct, especially with the current developments in technology. Next slide. The other obligations on our part is to cooperate with ZRA officers whenever required to. So they write to us, they ask for things, we need to give them. They want to visit our premises, we need to come them. And if you have water, give them water as well. Then we need to issue tax invoices for registered businesses. So every time a customer buys from us, we need to issue um, a tax invoice. For those who are registered for VAT, ZRI has now introduced the EFD machine. These are machines uh, which you use to issue invoices. In the past, we uh, we'll go to the printers, ask them for invoice books, but because of uh, too many cases of under declarations where people are not declaring all their sales, ZRA came up with these machines so that every sale you make, they, uh, it also reflect at ZRA. So that at the end of the month, whatever you have sold, must reflect at ZRA, and when you submit the returns, it should not be less than what you've submitted there. There are situations where uh, you have not given out invoices, the customer pays you by check, you take it to the bank. At the end of the day, when ZRA comes to compare your sales, they will ask for bank statements. They will find that you have more money which came into the bank against what you declared using your tax invoices. Then they will ask you to explain the difference. If you fail to explain the difference, the different, uh, that difference, they will tax it at the appropriate rate, depending on the tax type. Then they also add penalties and interest. Then the other obligation, we need to maintain sufficient records for auditing purposes. Now, currently, if ZRA asks for invoices and receipts and we fail to produce them on time, they will charge us penalties for late submission of invoices and the receipts. Then uh, we need to maintain sufficient record for a minimum period of six years. Now, the earlier on, I mentioned that we need to keep records as long as the business is in existence. Now, this six year period basically is for audit purposes. Uh, ZRA cannot audit uh, 
more than six years. Seventh year, eighth year, they will not audit. They can only audit up to six years backwards. However, in an event, there is an investigation. They are suspecting fraud. Then they can go beyond six years. Now, this is just about keeping records. Now, when it comes to payment of taxes, payment of taxes, there is no limit. If the liability has been outstanding for 10 years, when they realize it, they will come and ask for it. So that's why it becomes very important to keep the records as long as the business is in existence. For NAPSA, then you must keep the records as long as, as far back as 65 years now. Previously, it used to be 55 because in the event there is a dispute with the, somebody who worked for you, you must be able to produce those records. We need to display our tax registration certificates for VAT registered businesses in a prominent area place. So we need to display the certificate. If you don't, and ZRI inspectors from VAT departments come to your premises and they find that there is no certificate displayed, they will charge you penalties for any display of that certificate. Next slide. Conclusion. In the book of Colossians chapter three, verse 17, we are told to give thanks to God for everything we do and for every word. Why? Because in Jeremiah, the Bible tells us that the Lord has good plans for us. Secondly, it's the Lord who gives us the ability to create wealth. So it's very important in everything we do, in everything we say, we give thanks to our Lord. And we are thankful to Madam Kalinda and their team for this wonderful programs, sharing so that we grow our businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate the presentation as usual. It's been riveting and we've been scribbling away. Thank you so much. We have a few questions um, and I'd like to welcome a few people who are on the call. Trish Fallagan, nice to see you. Um, Chilubi, thank you for joining. Charles Paul, we appreciate your joining us. We have a question from Yona Banda. And he says, at what stage can a farmer start paying tax? The Zambian environment is very unpredictable and hostile, especially with money laundering cases on the rise and farmers are not exempt. So his question is, at what stage can, we, can a farmer start paying tax? Thank you. Uh, currently, As long as you have made a sale, if you are registered, for example, you've started your, 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 your farming in January, you have planted your tomatoes, they take three months, March you start production and selling, then the taxes become due. But uh, in the current budget, there is uh, a proposal uh, from uh, government to parliament because the budget must be approved, includes, including tax changes. For businesses whose turnover will be uh, less than 12,000 a year, they will not be paying tax. But this one will only be effective once it's approved by parliament and it will start next year or parliament might decide to increase the figure or reduce the figure depending on their debates and reasoning but currently the first sale if you are registered under turnover tax 
you are supposed to, to pay tax. However, in the event that uh, you have registered your business with a ZDA, Lambda Development Agents, there are tax incentives under ZDA. So you can visit ZDA offices to get more information. If you, are, you happen to get registered, there are exemptions which are given to businesses who register under Zambia Development Agents. But without an agent, Zambia Development Agents registration, then uh, you are required to pay tax from the way to go. Thank you. But if you register with the, the Zambia Agency, then um, what, when you say there are tax breaks, how long for? Are you exempt like for a month or a year? Uh, this one, it also depends on the type of business. There's uh, the type of business you are doing, then also the area where the business is, uh, uh, is situated. There are rural areas, urban areas, but ZDA should be in a position to give a clear guidance. Because uh, the unfortunate part with, uh, with Zambia is that uh, information is not readily available until one probably visits uh, such institutions, that's when they'll get uh, the, the, the correct information and the guidance. So they can visit any nearest ZDA offices and find out what exemptions are there. Thank you. My question was, you mentioned that um, we need T-pins for the business now with farming it's usually a family business would that require every member of the family to get a tip-in or do you just register one tip-in against the farming um, as a company or as an organization or registered um, institution okay for for family businesses uh if you are going to register at PACRA as a sole trader. Meaning, for example, uh, me and my family, we, we decide that uh, Bonwell, you go and do the registration at PACRA, then uh, at ZRI. So the other family members will not be required uh, to register for TP. For tax purposes for business tax. However, if the other family members are employees of the business and they are, they are on a salary, then they will be required to register for tipping for payers UN purposes for their personal tax. But for the overall business, it's just uh, one individual to register under so tradership. Now, if that family decides to run that business as a partnership, then all the partners, meaning if in that family there are four, mother, mother, father, and the two children, they form the partnership, then they need to, all the partners must apply for tipping. But again, the, part, the name of the partnership, for example, uh, if Subway Enterprises as a partnership, then it will also have its tipping. Uh, Thank you very that much clear? for that. Yes, that's very clear, actually. Um, you mentioned sole trade and partnership in terms of farming. Considering that avocados, uh, we are going to end up having things like byproducts or added value products like oil and that sort of thing. Is there a particular one that is quite useful in terms of that will encompass everything? Or do we, if you're a sole trader and you expand, do you need to re-register or to change your registration? Okay. Yeah, normally when when you when you are when you are starting. And uh, because 
the, the, the business is small, you decided to register as a sole trader. Now, under sole tradership, you can, you can still, especially if you, if you register with PAGRA uh, under Business uh, Name Act, you, have, you even have, have the name, you have the invoices, you can uh, still do other value addition. There is no problem there. But again, when the business starts to grow, it will give the, the buyers and suppliers confidence if they are dealing with a limited company. So now when the business grows, you can decide, you can go to, to PACRA to incorporate so that it becomes a limited. When it's a, it's a limited company, it gives confidence to suppliers as well as customers, but especially suppliers. Because a sole trader, it means you and the business are one. So if you die, everything dies. But with a limited company, if one shareholder dies, the other shareholders will remain running the business. That's where the confidence comes in. With a limited company, there's continuity. With a sole trader, the challenges of continuity are very slim from the legal point of view. Thank you very much. That was very useful, actually. I appreciate that. I've looked at the questions. We don't seem to have any more questions that are in the chat. Um, uh, are there any board members who are listening who would like to come off Zoom to ask any questions? Right, okay. Nobody has come off microphone to ask a question. Thank you so much, Mr. Chibesa, for this presentation. And as usual, if any members would like to contact Mr. Chibesa, he's on the group chat on WhatsApp, he'll be able to reply. Or as you can see, his numbers and organization are being displayed on there. In terms of services that you offer, um, sir, at IFI Savo Enterprises, are you also involved in helping people setting up their businesses? or setting up their um, organizations? Well, uh, and, and, uh, and if Savo Enterprises Limited, it's, uh, it's just farming, but for business and the tax consultants, there is uh, another company where I'm involved, it's called the Savage Consultants, it's based in Kitwe. So we do, tax matters and other business related issues. And do we contact you on the same number if anybody's interested in your in your in the tax part of your consulting? Yeah, it's fine. They can uh, get in touch with me. Then my team can pick it up from there. Thank you, sir. Again, thank you so much. I appreciate it. We are about to start a second part of this training session. We have a very unique opportunity. There is a software application called XFARM that we are about to present. Mr. Chibesa, you are free to join us and listen in, of course, because you're a member. And if you have any further comments or questions, Mr. Chibesa, please do feel free to jump in and um, to comment. Do you have last remarks before we turn off your presentation, sir? Yeah, my, my last marks are that um, we, we need to soldier on. There are challenges, especially on the part of personnel. Uh, what we have come to, to appreciate is that uh, our own brothers and sisters whom we employ, when people ask them where uh, where do you where do you work? They will normally answer away chivesa. Meaning I'm killing time at uh, Mr. Chivesa's uh, <laughs> a business farm or business. That mentality straight away is an indication that uh, they've not bought into our vision. They will they will not sweat for our vision. That's the biggest uh, challenge we have, and uh, 
uh, normally us, we, when we talk to our employees, we refer them to the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 22, to chapter 4, verse 1. This one who tells us that employees, the work they do is not for the earthly masters alone, but for Jesus Christ as well. Because he's the one who initiated work in the Garden of Eden. Then again, under the same verses, even as the employers, we are also reminded to look after our employees, to pay them a living wage, a fair wage, because the employees and as the employers, we are under one master who is Jesus Christ. So we, we try to remind our employees that they are not working for us only. Them and us, we are working for one master who is Christ and who has promised that he has a reward for even the work they do at our farms. So this has been the biggest challenge in uh, our businesses as Zambians because our brothers, young brothers and sisters would prefer to work for the, uh, the Bazungus. For the Bazungus, it's work. is killing time. But however, with prayer and dedication and bringing the Lord, I'm sure our brothers should be able to understand that work is not just for a pay. Work is a requirement from our Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Now we're going to have um, Marco come in to talk to us about X Farm. This was uh, arranged by our Secretary General, uh, Mr. Choa, who is now on the call. Mr. Uh, Marco is actually on a train at the moment. So what he has done is that he sent me this link. He's just recorded this about an hour ago. I will play this. And at the end of it, he will be happy to take any questions from members. If you have a question that you'd like to give, please feel free to ask the questions in the chat as it goes along. You, Mr. Choa, are you able to assist me with uh, any preliminary before I actually go ahead and play, sir? Introduction to X Farm. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, let me just introduce X Farm. X Farm is uh, an application which was built by Farmers for Farmers. And uh, it's been used in Europe and other parts of the world uh, to monitor and also manage the farm. Um, when I were going to Italy in May, I passed through their booth and I was actually amazed and uh, found they ran me through the application briefly. And I found it very exciting. And that's how we <clears throat> managed to contact the uh, farm that uh, we'll be interested in finding out more about the their their, their uh, technology. <clears throat> it's not does not only manage uh it helps I mean I mean it helps the farmers to manage everything related to running the farm from financing, irrigation system, monitoring, um and the north, uh warehouses and everything. And the good news is that uh, for most of most most of us don't stay on the farm. And with this application, you'll be able to start monitoring your farm, whatever you put in, including your crop, your diseases, and uh, you're able to predict, the system is able to predict things on uh, uh, subscription levels. Um, the infestation of the diseases. For me, uh, when Marcos gave me the presentation, he actually left me with a sensor, sort of sensor, which I've been using to monitor the farm in terms of irrigation. Previously, I would go to the farm as usual. We are like uh, where you leave the workers, you tell them the shed to what to uh, what irrigation, you find that they don't do that. They tell you, yes, both you are irrigating, but you find that's not happening. But with this application, and I went there and I installed it, 
immediately the uh, Marcos and the other team were able to monitor that the field is very dry. And they were surprised to say, you, it's about 10%. Are you sure? It's just in your farm, I said, yes. But after we get to able to monitor that, yes, the levels it moved up. And from there onwards, I've been monitoring from home every day. I'm able to tell that the moisture is moved down. But because the workers are aware that I'm monitoring, I can see that they do actually do uh, irrigate every, whenever there's a need. And my levels of moisture level has never gone beyond 20%, which is the standard, good standard, but we think, um, without taking too much time, uh, I think I'll hand it over to Linda to proceed with that. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I shall now proceed. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Marco Bezzi. I'm the business unit manager in X Farm for irrigation and uh, agri inputs. Um, as you know, I visited uh, your uh, cooperative in uh, September. I met Mr. Cho, are you able to hear it? No. You can't hear it? Okay. okay. And I can't see anything else. Oh. You can't see anything. Okay, let me start. Thank you. Please let me know when you could see. Mr. Choa, can you see it or you can't still see it? Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Marco Bezzi. I'm the business unit manager in X Farm for irrigation and uh, agri inputs. Um, as you know, I visited uh, your uh, cooperative in uh, September. I met John and uh, other member of your cooperative. And today I would like to provide you again a presentation about the company and then, of course, uh, I will available later for a question that uh, could rise after this presentation. So uh, let me introduce the company. I will share the presentation. Just one minute. OK. I hope you can see. So Xfarm is a um, scale up uh, company. Uh, we are based uh, in uh, Italy, uh, but we have uh, offices uh, uh, also in Switzerland uh, uh, and uh, France and Spain. We are today more than uh, 55, 57 people. We are 63 because we are increasing very fast. Uh, and uh, we already are active uh, in 24 markets. Our main goal is to help uh, uh, farmers uh, and the cooperatives in the digital transformation, uh, trying to improve the life uh, of farmers in terms of um, uh, resource saving, like water inputs. Uh, um, and uh, what we provide is a um, platform, is a app. Um, the platform is working uh, uh, properly both uh, on the computer, PC, uh, but even on mobile tablet, uh, the platform is a farm management information system, uh, an FMIS, and what we try is to integrate uh, uh, many uh, functions that could be helpful for farmers or cooperatives in the field. Our main uh, key words uh, are simplicity, because uh, a solution should be really simple to be used in the field, 
and integration, because as I say you, um, it's important to integrate different solutions since uh, uh, there are the, in, at this time uh, um, there are many digital tools available on the market uh, and it's very important to uh, try to uh, merge different tools in one single point and XFARM is doing uh, uh, this activity. Through XFARM uh, it's possible to save water, it's possible to reduce um, the use of crop protection products and it is even possible to reduce uh, uh, administration time. So XFARM has two main uh, business, uh, business to farmers. So we have uh, um, like 100,000 farmers already using the platform in Italy and Europe. Uh, we already uh, have in the platform uh, 1.5 million hectares. But XFARM has also a business model uh, with the big companies. So we are providing our platform to big company in the machinery sector and uh, in the supply chain for food. I will give you an overview about the, um, the app. So the, 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 there is a basic version of the app. It is basic version is free. So our internal policy is to leave the platform free forever. And uh, through this uh, uh, free version, uh, you can uh, upload uh, your fields, uh, your activity, uh, you can manage your warehouse, uh, you can uh, manage your loads, harvest, uh, you can take notes, uh, you can generate reports uh, that you can then uh, download as a PDF, uh, and uh, you can even integrate uh, the, the machine that you have. And already with the basic version of the app, uh, it's possible to have uh, uh, satellite images integrated. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, what we provide uh, is the NDY index. <coughs> then, of course, uh, there are uh, uh, additional features uh, that we call Pro Feature. Uh, um, we have a feature uh, to support uh, in uh, agronomical decision. So we provide irrigation advice. Uh, we provide uh, um, disease advice uh, or uh, forecast model for insect. We have uh, a finance tool and a logistic tool to, to support you in the management of your farm. Uh, so through the tools, uh, uh, this tool is quite easy uh, to uh, record cost and the benefit and the profit for each crop uh, or for each field, so it's very useful for, uh, for farmers and for cooperatives. Then uh, we have a um, pro version of the XFARM, uh, that, uh, a pro feature, sorry, that uh, is uh, focused on satellite images. Uh, with the Pro feature, you don't have just the NDY index, but you will get uh, NDY, the water NDY, the nitrogen uh, um, index. So you can use uh, uh, these uh, indexes based on satellite images to uh, build a prescription map, for example, for fertilization. And then we have an advanced machinery integration, the integration that is a Pro feature. Uh, through this uh, pro feature, you can uh, um, uh, upload directly from the field data from the machine, from the tool. Uh, data means not just the position of the tractor, but means uh, the, um, the fuel consumption, uh, how much seed, uh, for example, the tool, the, the tool uh, uh, used to, 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 for the seeding phase. And that is very important because uh, uh, all these data are uploaded automatically. And uh, so you will uh, uh, have uh, in your platform uh, all these data that are very useful then uh, to estimate uh, cost uh, benefit uh, and even to estimate the sustainability of each crop or each field. As you know, uh, the platform is able to connect a different kind of sensor. So for example, you could get the free version of the app uh, 
uh, with uh, all the basic feature. Uh, and uh, if you need a sensor, you buy just one sensor and you connect the sensor to, to the app and you just need to buy the sensor. There is no additional cost to manage the sensor then on the app, apart the connection cost if you uh, have uh, to install a SIM in the, in the sensor. So we have different kind of sensor. The most used sensor are the weather station. Uh, we are using Davis station. Uh, this is one of most, the most famous station worldwide. And we integrate in the Devi station the communication module that is produced by X-Pharma. So the Meteo station with the communication modules uh, acts as a gateway. So is uh, able to create a Wi-Fi network to connect uh, different kind of sensor uh, that we you, you could uh, have in the field. And then we have uh, many sensors like soil humidity sensor, leaf wetness sensor, uh, sensor to control the irrigation process, uh, uh, trap for uh, insect. Uh, so all these sensors are already integrated in, plat in platform. We have more than 100 sensors, so uh, I will uh, send you the catalog uh, and you will uh, check which one could be useful for you. Some images from the field. Uh, this is a weather station, uh, how uh, the disease uh, module appears. So you will uh, get uh, daily uh, the infection risk. Uh, this is uh, how the irrigation model appear. So through the data collected from the sensor, from the meteor station, and uh, through data uh, coming from a um, weather forecast model, it's possible to provide you daily uh, the best irrigation advice for Avogadro in this, in this case. Uh, you can uh, decide uh, which kind of irrigation strategy to apply and then the system daily will recommend you the exact quantitative of water uh, that the crop uh, will need. And then uh, again some picture from the field that this is uh, an insect smart, smart monitoring trap. Uh, through this trap uh, it's possible to get uh, remotely a picture from the trap so you don't have to go to the field to, to count the, the, the insect. Uh, the trap is uh, um, integrated with the automatic recognition module uh, algorithm and then we launched uh, recently even the forecast uh, model for insect. And uh, we have uh, also a special trap for Alimorpha Alice uh, that is quite a big problem in Italy. Then you can integrate the machine, as I told you, you can get a lot of data from the field. Uh, and which is the be final benefit for farmers, uh, reducing uh, uh, the water using uh, the field, uh, the, the crop protection uh, products, uh, and uh, reducing the time to, to, to manage the, the field and the farm. The, the app is useful even for contractors uh, because they can save uh, time, in time in organization time, uh, machinery fuel saving, and they can have uh, admin time saving. So let me go through the whole presentation, just more information. Uh, so these are some of the brands uh, working with, uh, with X-Farm. There are many companies in the food sector, uh, Barilla producing pasta, Lavazza producing coffee. We are working with Lavazza in Brazil, for example. We have uh, uh, Peroni for the beer, Kraft Heinz uh, again for cereal, uh, soya, sorry. And uh, we have uh, uh, a collaboration with Parmalat, for example, and uh, through this collaboration, uh, we start including X Pharma, even the livestock sector. X Pharma is used by this uh, big company to calculate uh, the sustainability uh, indexes. So, for example, Barilla decided to uh, ask to all farmers uh, pro producing, uh, producing uh, uh, grain for Barilla to use the app. And uh, through the data collected from farmers, like 3,000 farmers in Europe, 
Barilla is now able to calculate and not estimate the carbon footprint, the water footprint, uh, sorry, the net water usage, uh, the acidification and the eutrophization uh, KPI. So all these big companies in the food sector are very interested in the sustainability and X Farm is a, a good tool to support them uh, to calculate uh, the, the, their sustainability. We have uh, in Rome uh, Xfarm Lab. Xfarm Lab uh, is uh, our division composed by agronomists, data scientists. They are uh, working uh, every day in producing uh, uh, new algorithms uh, or in uh, um, modifying or improving existing algorithms for uh, irrigation advice, for disease pest models uh, and for insect models. And then we have a strong uh, um, activity, in, even in terms of education. Uh, one of our colleagues is working uh, every day with uh, secondary school, uh, with technical uh, institutes, uh, and the aim is uh, to, uh, to present the new technology to students uh, and through them uh, to, um, to, to, to share them the message with the, the parents at home that probably are farmers. Uh, so at the moment, of course, education is uh, focused in Italy, but uh, we can, uh, of course, uh, provide you uh, training even remotely. So this is Xfarm, <clears throat> um, you can get some contact here, uh, John will share you my email, Matteo is the CEO of the company. Uh, it's interesting to, to share with you that Matteo uh, is a, an IT guy, uh, he's uh, from Switzerland and uh, he has uh, like a thousand hectares of, uh, um, of uh, fields in Italy and uh, the Matteo started the company uh, because uh, he needed to uh, solve his problem to manage uh, the farm remotely because uh, the farm is in Italy and he's living uh, in Switzerland. So he started basically X Farm for, uh, to solve his problem. And then of course X Farm uh, was implemented, uh, grow, grew up a lot, uh, and now X Farm is an app uh, used by a lot of farmers. Uh, our payoff is uh, from farmer to farmers because uh, we know uh, which are the farmers' needs. Uh, we know how to treat them uh, with cooperatives, uh, farmers, uh, uh, how to speak uh, uh, with them, with you, because uh, uh, half of the people working for X Farm are uh, even um, farmers. They are not just IT guys uh, or sales uh, guys. Uh, they also have uh, uh, farms, uh, uh, fields. Uh, and uh, this is a good point to share with you because uh, we are not just an IT company, we are uh, an IT company but with strong uh, connection with the agri sector and with the agriculture. Even me, uh, I have a small uh, farms of apples in Italy and uh, I have 20 years of experience in the field with farmers uh, uh, for the construction of a new irrigation system and then the management of the, the irrigation system. So thank you again, it's Marco Bezzi. Uh, I leave the floor to Lydia, to John, and uh, we will speak soon uh, when I'm able to connect uh, for your question. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hand over now to Mr. Choa and Marco is on the call ready for your questions. So over to you, Mr. Choa. Hello, uh, Marco, good evening again. Hello. Hello, John. <clears throat> Hello, John. Hello, Lydia. Hello, everybody. Uh, one of the questions you want to find out is uh, how uh, users want to find out is uh, how many sensors they need per, per acre or per hectare? 
Yeah, so <clears throat> the, um, the, the number depends uh, on uh, the type of uh, um, farm that you have. So if there is a, a quite a good homogeneity uh, in the farm, uh, the same soil, uh, uh, we could take uh, as a reference uh, just a few sensors in terms of uh, soil moisture or other uh, parameters that uh, we could measure in the field. So it, it really depends on how big is the farm, uh, uh, how homogeneous is the soil, uh, and the orography, of course, uh, <clears throat> if, if, if there is a flat land, uh, the homogeneity could be guaranteed. Uh, if if the, the land is very hilly with the difference in terms, terms of exposure, uh, radiation, uh, we should uh, uh, think to, 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 yeah, to install uh, different uh, sensors to represent different conditions. Uh, there is also another question. Uh, uh, in terms of connectivity, there are your sensors. What in terms of power? Do they need electricity? Do they work for with solar? How yeah. Does it work? Yeah. Good question. Yeah, the, all our sensors are independent in terms of uh, energy, uh, since they have a uh, solar panel, they have uh, a battery inside uh, to keep energy during the, the night, of course. And in terms of connectivity, we have uh, both the cellular line, so each sensor needs to have uh, a SIM card, but uh, if you install uh, a metal station, the metal station could act as a um, gateway for sensors, so uh, we will uh, connect uh, different sensors um, through the metal station using a Wi-Fi connection. So just the metal station in that case need a SIM card. So, so you uh, you mean that uh, these sensors, because most of our farms are in the rural areas, far from town. Uh, we don't need power. I don't need uh, for me to to connect to view my farm. If I uh, understood properly the question, yes, uh, uh, they are independent in terms of energy, and uh, for connectivity, they, even for connectivity, they are independent. Then uh, you have to choose uh, if you want to have a metro station to use a Wi-Fi connection or if you want to have uh, just a soy sensor uh, that needs uh, a SIM card inside. Okay. Uh, what about in terms of uh, uh, the free vision? Uh, are we able to view the farm using a separate image? How current is the images? Say I'm in Bissaka and my farm is a farther uh, kilometers away. Would I be able to view the farm using the satellite image that far? Hey John, or sorry. What, I, I, could, could you repeat the question, John? You had mentioned that um, the free vision can see. <laughs> Does it mean that if my farm is very far away from where I am, I will be able to see, to view my farm in the second? Marco, did you get that? You know, because there is some noise behind me. Sorry, sorry just one minute. I mean, the train station communication will stop. Uh, uh, it stopped now. Okay, so the, the question is, uh, if uh, you are in the farm, um, I, I didn't get the point, John, sorry. Does distance count in relation to where you are looking at the data from your app to the farm? Yeah, the, the, um, the I mean, the, all the data are sent to the cloud, so there is no problem in terms of distance. Uh, uh, the distance uh, from uh, the metro station could be around a few kilometers if you want to install the Wi-Fi network. Okay. Did, did I answer? 
Yes. What about the satellite imagery? Or you know about the satellite imagery? Uh, images. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 the image. The, the images that uh, we use uh, are satellite images, uh, and the frequency of uh, acquisition is five days. Uh, so with the pro version of a satellite module, you will uh, get uh, images every five days uh, if there is a uh, um, clear sky. Of course, if there is a, a cloudy weather, a satellite cannot uh, provide images. Uh, but this is a problem of satellite. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's not our problem. Uh, anyway, we are implementing also the Sentinel-1 images. We have a project with the European Space Agency. And the good point about uh, uh, Sentinel-1 images is that the, these kind of images are uh, uh, radiometric images. So even with the cloud, uh, they can uh, provide the information about the, the, um, the soil humidity. Thank you, uh, Marco. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I was just going to ask. Um, if I had three farm managers, can they all access the same account at the same time, or is it one account per person per farm? They um, they can. Uh, there is a special feature uh, that is called uh, multi agency, uh, so they could have their own account. Uh, but then uh, it's possible to connect the same account, uh, the same different account to the, to the um, uh, a main account, uh, able to, to see all the data from uh, different uh, farms. Thank you. That's all the questions I had. Uh, I don't know whether you had any more questions, Mr. Chola. Yes. Um... If you have got three or four, five farms, can I use one account and use those accounts using just one account to different farms in different locations? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you uh, you could have uh, as a farmer just one account to use uh, it uh, for different uh, fields, different parcels. So no problem with that. Hello? Did you get the point? Yes. Well, we heard. Did you get the point, uh, John? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. You okay. said that yes, it can happen to manage uh, different farms in different locations. Yes. The so. next question. The next question, Marco, is uh, on the gap global gap uh, good agriculture practices. Can we use app, your, this app to manage our global gap documentation? Yeah, that is possible, John. Okay. Uh, it, it, okay. Uh, so you, you are saying is your, the, this app is compliant to global gap? Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's a aligned with global gap, so you can uh, use the data for the global gap. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. That's all the question I have, Linda. Thank maybe you the very question much. Is when, yes, yeah, go ahead, sir. Linda, maybe, in terms of installation of, uh, I know I got help from uh, when installing my sensor. I got help from uh, Paolo, and uh, he was able to give me instruction. It was very easy. So. What about those people who may not be able to be challenging techni technical, technically, although it's not so, it's just to plug it into the soil at certain levels and things like that. What sort of help do we get, can we get from X farm in terms of installing the sensors? Yeah, uh, we can provide uh, uh, remotely all the assistance uh, that you need uh, uh, for uh, sensor installation. As you have, as, as you have seen with Paolo, it's quite easy the installation. We can provide you uh, also in collaboration with your agronomist uh, 
uh, which are the best uh, uh, depth to install the sensor and to how to connect it. But it's, it's quite easy because uh, you just have to, 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 to install the sensor in the soil and then to press a button and the sensors start communicating with the cloud. The, Marco, the next question is on the disease management. I've sent you some a list of the, some, some of the uh, diseases that were of primary concern for avocado. The only thing we have the time to review and see if you have got the solution for them or monitoring on track. Yeah, in terms of disease, uh, you sent me the main disease for avocado. Uh, uh, we already have some of them. So we can provide, for example, uh, diabrotica, uh, root rot, uh, and then uh, I don't remember all the list, but uh, if there is uh, any uh, disease that is not uh, in, uh, already uh, available, we can start uh, a research project with you uh, to, to, yeah, to, 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 to implement uh, new algorithms for new uh, disease. Of course, in that case, uh, we need time to, for the development. Uh, we generally, uh, what we do generally is to start collaboration with the companies, uh, for example, uh, even for Barilla. And uh, with a two years project, we are able to, to, to provide you uh, the dis new disease models. Of course, it needs time uh, because, uh, yeah, we need data from the field, uh, uh, some help from your side to monitor uh, disease appearance. Uh, and then uh, all the data are used to, 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 to construct new models. We, we have another question, Marco, from Mr. Uh, uh, Peter Kavuma. Uh, he wants to find out if there's a provision to manage the security at the farm. Is there any provision to this uh, uh, technology? Uh, John, what, what do you mean? Uh, security at the farm using the X farm. I think he's, he's wondering whether it's possible to join or include um, remote security, for, for instance, CCTV um, into the app. So any security features in terms of either alarms or CCTV, whatever security features you have, instead of managing remotely. Thanks, Marco. Yeah, we have uh, uh, the, the special feature that is called alert. And through the alert, you could get uh, alarm if uh, any parameters is uh, uh, not uh, um, if, if there are not correct parameters, the, the system will advise you. And uh, the system will advise you also uh, if there is some problem uh, in terms of a communication network or uh, if there is any problem with battery, you will receive an alarm on the app. If you mean that for uh, security. Yes. Yeah, I think it will include like perimeter breach. Where things like that, yeah. Or, or CCTV to monitor, the cameras to monitor what's happening at the farm. What, what we can do is uh, to install uh, a, a cam, a camera, uh, and uh, you can have uh, a remote uh, overview on your farm through the, 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 through the video recorded by the camera. So this, is, this could be like a yeah, security uh, feature of our app, I would say. There is another question, Marco, that's come up from Mokava Molai. And they're asking how much will it cost to install the system at a farm? And is it one off payment or continuous subscription? 
Mr. Chowa, you might want to answer this, but that's the question for Marco. Yeah, installation costs uh, uh, are not included in the in the offer I sent you because uh, uh, we we uh, assume that uh, the installation will be done uh, locally, and that that could be uh, probably um, an opportunity for your cooperative uh, if you want to provide this, the the installation service. Uh, although uh, each farmer with our uh, the uh, remote uh, um, support could install by himself. Uh, so it depends how, if you want to, to, to provide this service to your uh, uh, associates uh, or if you prefer to leave uh, them uh, the installation. That's a good point. And I think the technical committee, Mr. Cho, I'm sure will be able to agree with me in terms of it will depend on the appetite of the farmers and if they do feel like they need support from Lamax, I'm sure we'll be able to support that. Do you have any comments, Mr. Chowa? Uh, no, 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 I'm fine. I think we'll discuss that. Probably if it's a, a cooperative where uh, we'll be getting every involved, we may have to provide support locally. Okay. Uh, Marco, the other question regarding subscription, I'm assuming has got to do with cloud storage. Does the, the fee that we pay include cloud storage or do we have to pay a subscription on a regular basis for that? No, for, uh, the, there is a, a cloud service uh, and communication cost uh, is different if uh, we are using a Wi-Fi connection or SIM card connection. So of course with the SIM card is uh, more expensive uh, uh, with the Wi-Fi is uh, cheaper. But then uh, uh, when you buy the sensor, there are not other subscription costs apart of the communication costs that, of course, we also have to pay. So it's, I mean, it's, uh, of course, we have to, to add this cost annually uh, to, for the maintenance of cloud service and communication. Of course. Thank you. I'm sure um, the question, uh, Ms. Mukava, we will probably be able to respond to you after the um, technical committee have met and Mr. Chowa will be able to share that on the group as to um, what the final conclusion is for the cooperative. I do not have any further questions, but it's up to you, Mr. Chowa, if you had any couple of more questions or closing remarks. Uh, I don't have any more questions, but maybe you can just say thanks a lot, Marcus, for finding time. I know you are on the road, you are at the station, you can hear the train in the background. Thanks for taking your time. Thanks for uh, uh, members of the time to uh, uh, listen to this presentation. And we hope we can only uh, hope that uh, some of us will proceed and that is uh, to manage our farm. As most of our people, most of our farmers, we're all remote farmers and we want to know what's happening at the farm. And uh, with this technology, uh, I know the major issue we have with the workers in terms of irrigation. If we can apply using the technology such as X farm, we'll be able to start irrigating remotely. And uh, Linda, thanks for making time and uh, managing this uh, link. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chowa. Mr. Chowa, would you be willing to um, to receive visitors who want to look at the sensor on your farm before we get the, the trial ones? Yeah, sure, that, that should be fine. Yeah, okay. that's what it's meant for. Yes. yes, yes. So anybody who's on the call or any of our members, Mr. Chowa, um, our Secretary General is on the, on, or both the chats. Mr. Chowa, are you both on the groups? On both groups? For the WhatsApp yes, group? Okay, so if you contact him directly, he'll be able to arrange for you to go and see how it's happening remotely. And for those of you who are remote and want a, a viewing or an idea of how it works, Marco has kindly sent us a video. And for tomorrow, Mr. Chowa, do you want to introduce tomorrow? Or Marco, do you want to talk about tomorrow? Uh, yes, we have, uh, tomorrow is training on how to use the XFAM app. We've got uh, Paolo of, from XFAM. So those, please join us and get some training. 
some of the questions uh, you've asked in, uh, you'll be able to ask even more of, um, and you're going to have some inside information about the app. Uh, so please join us more for training at 19 hours. Uh, Paolo works some of the conducting training online. Thank you. Marcos, would you like to say something more about the training tomorrow? No, that, that's fine. Uh, I spoke with Paolo today. I suggest Paolo to provide you uh, um, training on how to install a sensor, how to register the sensor on the platform, how to read the data, uh, and probably he will uh, provide you even uh, some training about the irrigation module if you in the future wants to buy also the irrigation feature. Uh, and then uh, feel free tomorrow to ask uh, more questions, uh, even on a different, uh, on, on other feature if you want. Uh, so Paul is the is the IT guy doing uh, most of the of our installation in the field. Uh, um, so is the right person to ask question about uh, um, yeah, technical aspects. Thank you very much. Uh, one, one more thing I'd like to also to learn more tomorrow is how to draw my field from remote to where I am. I want to go and start monitoring all the block, all the block, because we are not from restaurants, seen from the free app that I can actually draw and start monitoring the, my, my farm or block different from the phone. So I'd like to learn more about that tomorrow. Yeah, perfect, yeah. That is another important aspect, how to draw the, the field. Just ask Paolo and he will explain. Is uh, There are different options. You can draw uh, on the map uh, through, the, through the app, uh, but you can even uh, uh, go to the field and uh, trace the, the boundaries uh, using the app. So there are different uh, ways. Uh, if you have a shape file uh, and you already have uh, uh, the perimeters of your field, uh, you can just import uh, in, uh, in the app for the, uh, your, uh, your field. So it's, it's really easy. We did it uh, uh, even in Chitongo in Zambia one month ago with some farmer there. And they really appreciate the, um, how easy it was uh, uh, to measure the fields, uh, to trace the boundary. And uh, yeah, it's a very simple um, uh, feature, uh, is, uh, is free. So my main advice is uh, for all the people in this call is uh, just download the app, uh, try it. Uh, XFarm is very modular, so you could start just using the basic version and uh, you can decide uh, to, to add uh, when you want uh, uh, new modules, uh, new sensor, uh, so it's, it's really easy. Thank you both for joining and thank you to our members for joining. As usual, we'll try to bring the best for our cooperative members and we'll be here to offer support. Thank you so much, Marco. I appreciate your time and you're joining us even though you're traveling as Mr. Chowa has said. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chowa, for joining the call. You have saved my voice a lot. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Good evening. It was a pleasure. Yeah, bye. If you want uh, John or Lydia up 